We now return to Measure It on Modern Marvels. If you can measure distance and you can measure time, you can measure speed. Most of us rely on only one speed measurement, the one displayed on our car's speedometer. We expect it to be accurate every time we drive. The speedometer is the display that indicates how fast your vehicle is moving. Our speedometer picks up the speed that your tires are rotating and it converts that into the speed your vehicle is moving down the road. General Motors Proving Grounds in Milford, Michigan utilizes over 130 miles of track to test its speedometers for errors. What we're prepared to demonstrate here is how long it takes to cover the distance of a football field at a given speed. So in the simplest terms, distance divided by time, we're gonna go through one time at 60 miles an hour and measure that speed. Then we'll go the next time at 150 miles an hour to show for the kind of differences you'll see in the amount of distance covered in time. We're approaching the pylons here at 60 miles an hour, so we'll get our time. Start. Stop. So that was roughly three seconds to go through 100 yards. At 150 miles per hour, a car will make the same trip in a little over one second. Now we're approaching a little bit quicker than last time. Here's the pylons, set, stop. That was one second. Motorists can use this simple method to check the measurements on their car's speedometer. When you're going down the highway, there are mile markers, so you can set your cruise on a given speed from one mile marker to the next, take a stopwatch, and say, for example, it takes 45 seconds to go from one mile marker to the next. That means you're going 80 miles an hour. Fortunately, a speedometer does the calculating for us. It's real-time reporting of a vehicle's speed begins with wheel speed sensors and the bearing of each tire. That data from the wheel speed transfers up to an engine control module like this. This is basically a mini computer. This actually calculates the RPK, revolutions per kilometer for this tire, and it calculates the absolute speed of the vehicle going down the road. So that speed is then transmitted from this box to the cluster that you actually look at. Speedometers like this one only became available in the 1980s. Before we were as advanced electronically as we are, this would have been a cable coming into the back of the speedometer and actually rotating. And instead of using the computer to calculate the speed, there were sets of gears that mechanically did the conversion for you. Despite technological differences, the precise calibration of both systems depends on the diameter of the tires. A bigger tire will rotate fewer times over the same distance that a smaller tire will. So to get the calculations correct so that your speed indicates correctly, you just take that into account. The lesson? Change your tire size, and your speedometer will no longer be accurate. In the GM Tire and Wheel Lab, engineers use a dynamometer to try to replicate tire stresses equivalent to real road conditions. This machine simulates the load that this axle would see for a given car. This point changes with how heavy the vehicle is, how soft the tire is, how much heat is in the tire. So this is a way for us to accurately calculate what this radius is, which we call the static loaded radius. And that ultimately tells us what the revolutions per kilometer are. This RPK measurement is used to calculate speed in the engine control module. Speedometers obviously have a certain amount of error, but we try to keep our error within plus or minus a mile per hour when you're out at 60 or 70 miles per hour so that you know exactly what your speed is. In new cars, speedometers are more important than ever. When vehicles had a lot of wind noise or a lot of engine noise, a lot of road noise, it was obvious very quickly how fast you were going. And now, when you're in the most refined vehicles, you look down and you're surprised how fast you're actually going, which is why the speedometer is very important. All fine for us car drivers, but how does a pilot know how fast he's going? As it flies, a jet measures ram pressure, 
or the pressure of air molecules hitting the jet's body. The jet also measures air pressure. The difference between ram pressure and the air pressure is indicated to the pilot as the jet's speed. Pilots refer to their Mach meters during supersonic flight. The Mach speed is the jet speed divided by the speed of sound. Back on Earth, your speedometer is not the only thing measuring how fast your car is going on the highway. Officers use radar to track speeders on our roads. Sergeant Andrew Hernandez with the California Highway Patrol trains officers how to use the technology. Back in 1842, uh, Christian Johann Doppler uh, theorized the Doppler principle, and the Doppler radar is what is used in police radar. Radar uses radio waves to measure speed. The radio wave is infinite unless one of three things happens, and that's either refraction, refraction, or absorption. So when that happens, when it attacks a vehicle that is coming at it, it's going to go ahead and have what they call a Doppler shift. If the vehicle is coming at it, it normally compresses the waves. Pulling away from it, it'll elongate the wave. The patrol car's radar unit sends out radio waves to confirm the speed of the patrol car relative to the ground. The waves also reflect off other vehicles on the road, and the radar unit records the difference in frequency, or Doppler shift. That's all the unit needs to calculate the speed of the target vehicle. And the frequency shift recognized by the radar unit is audible to the officer. On the right would be the patrol car speed, and on the left would be the target vehicle speed. For example, we're picking up the big rig, we have 48 miles an hour. It doesn't come up and say, this speed belongs to this truck. That's where the expertise and the years in the job, being able to do a visual estimation of people's speeds comes into play. The radar unit is just a tool for the officers to verify what they're seeing. But when the unit detects a speeder, The reason why I'm stopping you, the posted speed limit is 65, and I'm having a radar at 80 miles an hour. Handheld radar units are a more selective way to measure a motorist's speed. What we have here is the Stalker uh, tool. It's a handheld radar unit. We can control what objects or what vehicles it's going to be picking up, which helps eliminate errors. Some people say, well, it wasn't me that you got. You got that car that was going the other way. And that, that's what this one will help solve and, and hopefully uh, put people's mind to ease that it was them. For drivers out there who think they can use a radar detector to outsmart the long arm of the law, think again. Detectors are going to detect the signal. And the unfortunate part is that yeah, they're going to do their job, but it's already too late. Speed measured it. Now let's measure weight. But let's make it a little more challenging. How about trying to weigh a live killer whale? It's estimated that 20 million speeding citations are issued in the United States every year. And police radar units are used in 13 million of those cases. Measure It will return on Modern Marvels.